Hey, what's up everybody? It's TJ with Sanctified Homes and today we're talking about everything rural. So if you're looking to buy a property out in the country, what are some things you need to understand and know ahead of time before diving into that? Because there are more expenses associated with your rural property. So this is a property that this driveway is gonna wind back and we'll show you where the building site is gonna be. But the first thing is, is you have to put a driveway in, right? So when you're looking at the properties, is it a short driveway? Does it have to be long? So this was all all uh, dug out. We put down breaker rock and then the crushed gravel on top of this, right? So depending on how wide it is, we had to put a 40 foot culvert in. You gotta get a permit just for the culvert. There's all kinds of things to think about with getting a driveway to your property where you want the house. So if you bought a 10 acre parcel and you think you wanna be in the back, that's totally fine, but you need to budget in for that driveway expense. When you write an offer, write in that you want a perk test for the septic system. So what a perk test is, is the county is requiring you or the township is requiring you to test to see where you can put a septic system. So there's different types of septic systems that can also go on your property. So they're digging and testing in a few spots where you think you want your septic. So you need to know where you think you want your house and then where that septic will go and they'll dig some scratch marks and somebody will analyze the soil and say, hey, you can do a mound system, you can do gravity fed, fed system, um, and then you decide what you're gonna put in. A septic system can be, we've had some around 15 to 16,000 and we just did one with a mound system that was almost 23,000. Third, you need to think about and discuss, does the property have a well already or do you need to actually drill a well on your property and that can add, depending on how deep you have to go or is there any rock that they're gonna hit, that can add another 15-ish, give or take a few thousand either way. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna kinda walk back. You can see this is a pretty long driveway and then there was more work to do because this property sits up on a hill and we wanted to excavate that out so we had a, a big flat spot to actually build the house on the property. So let's head on back and uh, we'll go from there and talk about that. All right, we're out back where we have cleared this spot. So you can actually see and why we didn't set the house up that way is because the property line is right up there. So they wanted this flat spot and then they're actually gonna end up putting a pool in and all kinds of stuff like that. So we had to do a ton of grading to get this flat spot flattened out we also had to do a bunch of compacting because you don't want to build on top of soil that is brand new. They say you want to be on virgin soil. If it is not new, I'm sorry, if it is old soil, you can build right on top of it because we cut this hill out and pushed this out so you had a big flat surface. We had to compact it, um, soak it, and we'll probably do that again before we actually start building once we dig the footings for the house. So this is something else to think about when you're looking at your land, if you go, hey, I'd like my house in this location. You have to figure out what it's gonna be to one, clear the lot. So if it's a very wooded lot, you gotta take out trees. This one, we had very minimal tree work to do, but we did have a pretty extensive driveway. Uh, it was probably over, <laughs> I'm gonna guess four or 500 feet long. Maybe, maybe not quite that much, but somewhere in that range. So the driveway was a big expense. Well, and septic will be when you're buying rural. And then the other is how do you prep the site so that you can build in that spot. So sometimes you start digging and you find stuff in the soil that makes it not as advantageous. The other stuff that you need to think about where we were talking is if you find a property that has a pretty significant slope, you cannot go over um, a 10% grade slope. So what that means is 10% is the max, that's a pretty steep slope, but you cannot go higher than 10 feet up for every 100 feet, okay? So if somebody is a three or 4% grade, which this property was, if you remember from uh, where we first were shooting, that was roughly three to 4%, which was not bad, a little bit of slope, but it wasn't flat, obviously. So just remember when you're looking at it, ideally, you're talking to the builder that maybe you think you're gonna work with, have them come out to the lot with you, take a look at it. They should be able to educate you and tell you about, hey, we're gonna need to cl clear trees here. Because it's not like you can just come in, if it's a very wooded lot, and clear just where you think you want the driveway to go. We have to be able to get big equipment back here from dump trucks, cement trucks, delivery trucks with all the material that we're gonna use to build your house. So it's probably gonna get cleared a little wider than you think it would. 
So it's all stuff that you need to factor in. So when you're building out in the country, there's no set amount because sometimes the well, septic and driveway is already in, right? But sometimes nothing is in and you have an undeveloped lot. So how do we do that and take it to a lot that you can actually build on? Guys, I hope this video helped. Uh, if you have any other questions, videos that you want us to do stuff on as far as building in the country and town, what to look for in houses, outside of the building science videos where we try to talk about how to make your home safer, healthier, and better for you and your family. Give us a like, subscribe, give us a comment, tell us what you think, what kind of stuff you want to see out there. We're here to help you guys and raise the standards and in the industry for homeowners looking to build and also builders that uh, are in the industry that need to step it up a notch. So again, guys, please like, subscribe, follow, share it, and don't forget to raise your standard. We'll talk to you soon.